Are you working so hard at trying to do your best at work and for everyone else in your life that you have nothing left for yourself? Do you want to be seen as a good person, a good leader, a good Christian, so you say yes to almost everything and feel guilty saying no or setting boundaries around your time? I spent most of my life trying to find my value in seeking the approval of others, achieving success in school and in my career, and trying to be whatever I thought made me pleasing to others. And guess what? I still didn't feel good enough. God changed all that for me, and I know that you can find freedom from people-pleasing and approval-seeking too. I know that you can create more time for the things that matter most without guilt and shame. You can find fulfillment outside the approval of others just as I did. God changed my life through Christian Life Coaching and planted it in my heart that I needed to honor Him by serving other women in the same way. Let me help you create more breathing room, more space in your day so that you can better hear God's leading. Go to gracefilledleader.com to learn more. That's gracefilledleader.com. Grace, G-R-A-C-E, filled, F-I-L-L-E-D, leader.com. If you've grown up in the church or are a practicing Christian, chances are you're familiar with the season of Advent. I remember each week watching another Advent candle being lit during church service to represent another aspect of Advent. But what is Advent anyway? Do we really stop and think about Advent in an intentional and meaningful way? Well, I'll speak for myself in saying that I certainly have not done a bang-up job of that over the years. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, I'm usually fighting overwhelm and anxiety as I cram in all of the holiday to-dos. But this season, I want to be more intentional about studying and thinking about the season of Advent and what it signifies. In today's episode, I want to talk about the meaning of Advent in literal and a spiritual sense, and hopefully leave you with some food for thought as you go about the month of December. So stay tuned for today's dose of soul care for all you busy boss ladies out there. Welcome to the Grace Failed Leader Podcast. Do you want better work-life balance? Do you get stuck in patterns of perfectionism and people-pleasing? Have you always been an overachiever but never really felt good enough, no matter how much outward success you achieve? Do you want more time for the things that matter most? Well, you are in the right place. Here on the Grace Field Leader Podcast, we focus on spirit-driven success and share the secrets to having better work-life balance as a busy woman in leadership. Here you will learn how to set boundaries like a boss, find peace of mind, and reclaim your time for the things that matter most. Hi, I'm Tanya, a wife, mom, leader, and certified Christian life coach. For most of my life, I tried to find worthiness through achievement. I spent decades people-pleasing and pouring myself into my work. I was looking for my value through the approval of others. This led me to feel burned out, empty, and exhausted. I had no time or energy for myself or my family. I realized that I was wasting time and energy looking for validation in all the wrong places. But my life changed when I finally surrendered and God showed me a different way. It is my mission to help you start living the abundant life God has for you. If you're ready to become fueled by grace and find freedom from people pleasing, if you're ready to multiply your time and impact as a Christian woman in leadership, this podcast is for you. Roll up your sleeves, sister friends. It's time to get after it. Let's start with the actual literal meaning of the word Advent. Advent means the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. For the church, Advent is a four-week season in the church calendar dedicated to anticipating the arrival or the advent of Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah and King. Christians from many backgrounds celebrate this time with 
reflections on hope, peace, love, and joy, with the primary focus being on the hope-filled arrival of Jesus. And actually, it is the celebration of and the anticipation of the first and the second coming of Christ. Did you know that the second coming of Christ is an aspect of our Advent celebration? It makes sense, though. We've already seen the first coming of Christ as a baby born in a manger, God coming to earth in human form. Advent is a time to reflect on the unexpected nature of Jesus' humble birth and join in the anticipation of when he will come again to reunite heaven and earth. Seven years before Christ was even born, prophets told of his coming. Micah called out the town of Bethlehem as the town in which the Messiah would be born. Bethlehem was otherwise a small and insignificant place, fitting of the humble birth of Jesus. Jeremiah prophesied about a Savior that would come from the line of David. And Isaiah spoke of a Messiah that would spring from the stump of Jesse, who, of course, was David's father. Isaiah describes the Messiah as one who would bring light to a dark place and time. In Isaiah 11.5, it reads, Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign The young woman, pregnant and about to bear a son, shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Reference Isaiah 7.14 For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. Reference Isaiah 9.5 But a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Reference Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 2. Think about that. Hundreds of years before Jesus' birth, God had already picked the place and began speaking through the prophets prophets, this message of hope to come. Advent is a reminder to us to cling to the hope, peace, joy, and love that comes from a life lived in the promises offered through Christ's birth and death on the cross. Regardless of our circumstances, we can choose joy and hope, grounded in God's promises. He he promises us a peace that surpasses understanding and a joy that is only complete when we accept his gift and invite the Holy Spirit to live in us. Even better than the first Advent, the anticipation of Christ's birth is the second Advent, the hopeful anticipation we have of his return. In Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 through 5, the author John reveals the vision given him by the Lord. He says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. These were God's words to John, and they are trustworthy and true. Words we can count on, the promise of his return. 
What is revealed to John in regard to the end times was also revealed to Isaiah with a number of verses holding similar references as are in Revelation. And here's something really interesting. Many of those scriptural connections are made in Isaiah chapter 66. And did you know that Revelation is the 66th book of the Bible? Isn't that interesting? For example, Isaiah chapter 66 verse 22 says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord. Do you see the same words there in Isaiah chapter chapter 66 as were in Revelation chapter 21? My friends, I am so enjoying the realization that it is not just the, the one day of Christmas that holds so much meaning, but it is through the entire season and the themes of Advent that we are truly immersed in the story of our Savior, past, present, and future. We serve an awesome God, the creator of the universe, and the author of a story that was written with great detail and intent. God's creation is his love letter to us, and the season of Advent reminds us of the promises, the gifts he has given us, all wrapped up together in a small baby born in a manger, the Messiah that came to live, die, and rise again to give us new life. We celebrate the hope of his birth, first given through prophecy hundreds of years prior, We celebrate the peace that surrounds his birth in the quiet and humble stable and that he later leaves with us through his Holy Spirit. We celebrate the joy of his birth heralded by the angels and we are covered in the unfathomable and eternal love given us by the Father God through Jesus. He loves us so much that he planned in advance our salvation, the grace we do not deserve, that we might be reunited with him for eternity. So as you celebrate Advent and look forward to the celebration of Jesus' birthday, don't forget that the anticipation and hope does not end there. We can choose hope, peace, joy, and love regardless of our circumstances because of what is yet to come. Jesus is yet to come again to establish his kingdom with us, his church. As always, my friends, I hope you will slow down this Advent season and let the Lord fill you with hope, peace, joy, love, and his amazing grace. 